I was teaching in Sussex High School and uh, had the specials, the ones who find it difficult to read and write. And I was teaching them art or allowing them to do art or play in my classroom. One lad came in, a very poor lad from Glasgow, and his mother had cut his hair and he was a real mess, really. And of course, the other lot, just like a feeding frenzy, just jumped on him and uh, went for him, really. He's taking the Mickey, taking the poor lad's life was getting pretty miserable. So to make him feel better, I stuck him on a stool and started to model him. Made him feel good, made the others feel jealous, and I was enjoying it too. Um, with the intent of doing a straight portrait, just as I normally would before that time. And then I had, did this for a couple of days and wrapped around the, the, the clay with the wet rags you know, to keep, it, keep the clay wet. And one morning I came and unwrapped the rags, went back up to my desk and sat down. After an hour or so, I looked. I saw this thing almost as for the first time. Oh, and it was quite a shock, really. Like an object. So, oh, what's that? Then I realized, obviously I realized it was wee jaws that I'd been doing. And then I realized that this was an unfinished state. It was finished to such an extent, to a fine extent, that I could, or anybody else could recognize who this was. That, that was definitely wee jaws. But it was half finished. I mean, there's parts of his face not quite finished yet. Then I realized he's not a whole person. He's not a finished person. So I began to actually think about art and what art can do. No, I'm okay. It was the next one after that. It was quite difficult actually to try and achieve what I'd done accidentally before, to try and recreate that feeling, that sense of uh, creativity or that recognition that I had. I enjoyed the, the struggle to make a piece of clay look like someone and have some excitement about it, some of the value, some of the vitality, some of the quickness of a human being. People have asked me, when did you decide to do this, this, this mark in the clay? I thought, well, I don't, I just, just don't, I work. Then recognize it, I think, yeah, I'll keep that after I've done it. I can't think before what it's going to look like. When I first start, there's obviously some things I've got to consider, practical things like uh, the clay is going to go on a head peg, which is usually a stick with wire to hold the clay. I've got to know from the beginning roughly where I want the armature and the wires to be. I start pushing the clay on just into rough shapes and battering it very tightly with a large wooden thing, nothing being fussy, no small tools at that moment, until we get roughly into that shape of a head, a skull even. And then I will mark the, the centre line where the nose is and where the eyes are going to be and through the mouth. The thing I really think is quite important is the neck to the head, the attitude of the neck to the head. Often you see in silhouettes, which um, not only black things, but if that silhouette is right, you, you know who it is. You know? So that can take care of likeness. To get that right is a good thing. Then it means you can go off and do your own wee thing about changing it into the fight I mentioned earlier of getting it to recognize the person and still have the clay as an exciting object. I mean, I've ruined many a good portrait where I've had the basics there when you know who it is. Norman McCaig put it really well in his poem. He did a poem called The Portrait Bust. And where he describes the sculptor as saying, I can't remember the exact words, but it was along the lines of, he tried this and he tried this, and he said, this is not right, this is not right, that's not him, this is not right. And he banged it with his stick back to the beginnings again and thought, yeah, that's it, I've cracked it. And then he started to spoil it again by going back to try and do eyelashes and wee bits of hair and nose and whatnot. So when I read that poem of McCaig, which was after I had done his bust, I was quite pleased because I thought, oh, the guy will understand what I've done to him. <laughs> if he ever looks down from wherever he is or up from wherever he is, he will see and understand what I've done. But it was a lovely moment, that, to know that he understood too.